Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're going to do a top 10. The topic of this top 10, top 10 non-Rumble Royal Rumble matches. And I know that's hard to say in a mouthful. Basically this is my 10 favorite matches that happened at the Royal Rumble pay-per-views that weren't the Royal Rumble itself. Let's jump right into it. Our number 10, from the Royal Rumble 1993, Shawn Michaels versus Marty Jannetty. Now, a lot more is said about their Raw match against each other that's looked at more favorably. I personally lean towards this match a little bit more. I like this match just a little tad more than the match they had on Raw. I really wish they would have had more of a feud, and I know there were some issues with Jannetty back at the time that caused it from not going any further. Coming from being one of the most popular and over tag teams of the last five years at this point to breaking up and then Shawn Michaels going on to be Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, who at this time looked like he was going to be a star in the solo run on his own. This is a really fun match, a really good way to have two former teammates go against each other, hence why it makes my list. Now, number nine, one of these things is the same, the other is not. Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker from Royal Rumble 1998 in the casket match. This is famously the match where Shawn Michaels gets his back injury that puts him out of wrestling for four years. Even with that being said, and you could notice him in, in pain about halfway through the match and to the end. Him and The Undertaker still put on a great match here. Now, is it as good as their WrestleMania matches? You'd be very hard-pressed to find any matches that are as good as their WrestleMania matches. But this match, for what it was, when it happened, and what it was the, the precursor to, what it was leading into, everything about this was really awesome. I mean, Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker, two of the most legendary wrestlers in WWE history. Undertaker was really starting to break out and have more great matches other than great spectacles which he had been known for before this this was just a fantastic match unfortunately it led to an injury but still a very enjoyable match in my opinion now going from that our number eight brock lesnar versus seth rollins versus John Cena from Royal Rumble 2015. It is hard to put together three-way matches and have them make coherent sense. And a lot of times you see there's a lot of action, but not a lot of story. This had both. This had action. This had story. This had the different dichotomies between all three guys. Brock versus Seth. Seth versus Cena. Cena versus Brock. This was a fantastic three-way. I enjoyed all three of these guys' work here, and they really put on one of the matches that, in my opinion, one of the better matches of 2015, and probably one of the better matches of Cena and Brock's careers. I really enjoyed this. I thought this, again, was another really fun match. One of the real highlights of that year. Now going from that, our number seven. From Royal Rumble 2000, the Hardy Boys versus the Dudley Boys in a table match. This was basically one of the precursors to the TLC match. We had a ladder match. I believe the year before with Edge and Christian versus the Hardys. And the tables matches, the tables were the Dudley Boys specialty. The Hardys were the ladder match was their specialty. And Edge and Christian was the chairs were their specialty for the concerto. That's how we got to the TLC. This basically, without the ladders, is similar to their TLC matches. Like I said, this is one of those matches that laid the groundwork for what was coming up with the TLC matches. Just a fantastic match. Another match to prove that the Hardys and the Dudleys were two of the best tag teams of the era, if not two of the best tag teams of all time, which I would definitely consider them in. I would put both of these guys in both teams in my top 10. I honestly think the Dudley boys are the greatest tag team of all time. So to me, you got two of the top tag teams of all time in a very violent, a very awesome car crash style match, almost a precursor of the modern style of wrestling coming from here. You can see the influence of both these teams all throughout pro wrestling. There is a dozen tag teams that emulate the Hardy Boys, and there's a dozen tag teams that emulate the Dudley Boys, and this is just a fantastic match. I really enjoyed this. It gets overshadowed by the TLC matches, but I definitely think this match is great as well. Going from that, our number six. From the Royal Rumble 2001, Chris Jericho versus Chris Benoit in a ladder match. And I know, I mention this every time I bring him up, he's... What he did was terrible, it was deplorable, but I gotta be honest, he had some of the greatest matches of all time. I mean, it's 
hard to say. And I have to be honest, and I have to include him on this list just because of that. And this match with Jericho was so good. These guys had a chemistry a lot like Benoit had with Eddie Guerrero, like Benoit had with Dean Malenko, where any time you put the two of them in the ring, they were going to give you a highlight reel match. It is unfortunate that we have to paint Benoit in a negative light now because of what happened at the end. But if you could separate the the tragedy from the wrestler, which I know it's hard to do, he is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I, I can't argue that fact. At the time, he was one of my favorite wrestlers to watch all the way up until his unfortunate death and what happened. But yeah, so I don't like talking about him too much because of all of that, but I gotta give the devil his due. He did put on a great match here. We're going from that our number five. Another match from Royal Rumble 1993. Bret the Hitman Hart defending the WWF Championship against Razor Ramon. There were a few guys that, that Bret Hart matched up with that really made great style matches, great style clashes. His matches with Shawn Michaels, his matches with his brother Owen, even matches with Psycho Sid and Diesel. But to me, Bret Hart and Razor Ramon is a match that not a lot of people talk about and really should. Because Razor is so good. Scott Hall is such a great wrestler. And being in there with Bret the Hitman Hart, who arguably is one of the ten best technical wrestlers of all time, they absolutely put on a clinic. I mean, this was the cream of the crop in WWF or WWE, whichever you want to call it, in 1993. They went out there, had an absolutely awesome match. It's another match, again, that not a lot of people talk about. They look at other Razor Ramon matches, other Bret Hart matches more fondly. If you haven't seen this, I definitely say go check this out. Even if you don't watch anything else on that pay-per-view, this is worth going back and checking out on its own. They'll go from that our number four. From the Royal Rumble 2017, AJ Styles versus John Cena. I had a lot of trepidation with AJ Styles coming into WWE. First off, he had came off of what I consider his best run in his career in wrestling, his run with the Bullet Club. And I was worried seeing how other TNA talents or other outside talents had been treated prior to AJ coming into WWE. This is one of the matches, and it's not just this match, the entire year leading up to this and this itself were some of the things that made me really realize that they're going to use AJ Styles and they're going to use him properly and he's going to get to have these high profile matches with guys like John Cena, guys like Brock Lesnar, all the way up and down the card. For someone like myself that was a huge AJ Styles fan, this was a great match to see. I'm trying not to give away spoilers. If you've noticed, I haven't said who won any of the matches. But I think this was a great a great way to put both guys over. And I'll just leave it at that. I won't say who won or lost, but I don't think any, either of the two lost. AJ looked better being in the ring with John Cena to the WWE fans. John Cena got to have a great match with one of the great wrestlers of all time, AJ Styles. It made both guys better coming out of it. Now going from that, our number three. From the Royal Rumble 1999, The Rock versus Mankind in the I Quit match. This match is most remembered for being part of the Beyond the Mat movie and the brutality of the chair shots that Mick Foley took to his head from The Rock. And it's a hard watch, especially now going back and watching it, knowing what concussions are, knowing about CTE. At the time, CTE wasn't as prevalent. People didn't know as much about concussions and what they could do to people. It's hard watching that now and especially going back and I've said it on record a million times. Mankind is my favorite wrestler of all time. Mick Foley is my favorite wrestler of all time. And seeing him getting battered in the head I think it's something like 14 times with a steel chair unprotected as he's handcuffed. It's jarring. It it bothers you. It even bothered you back then in an era where the violence was ramped up with a guy who was known to ramp up the violence in McFoley. It still bothered you. I almost think that this match bothers me more now to watch than the Hell in the Cell match. And I know he got injured further on the Hell in the Cell, but the chair shots, it was just brutal. This was a brutal match. It definitely made The Rock look more vicious than he ever looked. And that was one of the gifts that Mick Foley gave to a lot of wrestlers. Fantastic match either way. A legacy of brutality, as let's say the Misfits would say. 
I definitely recommend watching it, but for those of you that are a little squeamish, maybe not. Now going from that, our number two. From the Royal Rumble 2003, Kurt Angle versus the aforementioned Chris Benoit. Again, I gotta bring him up, but how can you deny Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit? For a lot of fans of of wrestling at the time. This was the ultimate match. This was the dream match. This was the Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart. This was the Kenny Omega versus Kazuchika Okada. This was the match that all the wrestling fans wanted to see. You wanted to see Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit, the two best wrestlers in the world. And they definitely did not disappoint. This was an all-time great match. Again, if you can't separate the man from the, the crime, I definitely understand, but if you can, I'd say go back and watch this because it's a fantastic show. Now before I get to my number one, there's a thing I do here on my top tens called the best of the rest. Basically it's things that were considered for the list, but didn't quite make it. First up, from the Royal Rumble 1991, the Rockers vs. the Orient Express. This was the opening match on the 91 Royal Rumble, and it really set the tone. Much like I said with the Hardys and Dudleys, just a bit ago. I do feel like teams like the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, even Rob Van Dam and Sabu took a lot of keys from these two teams. The things that the Rockers and the Orient Express were doing in the early 90s, and they had a couple different matches that were all really good. It was stuff that you wouldn't see for another five years or so. It was very innovative, very fast paced, very frenetic, kind of ushering in that next, that next wave of ultra-athletic, super-talented tag teams that would come on later in the decade. Another fantastic match, another one I would consider maybe a little bit of a hidden gem. Definitely go check this one out as well, and I know I said that a million times already, but a great match either way. Last but not least on the best of the rest, from the Royal Rumble 2010, The Undertaker versus Rey Mysterio. To me, we have the ultimate David and Goliath match up here. The best little man that's ever done it in Rey Mysterio versus arguably the best big man that's ever done it in The Undertaker. Both Rey Mysterio and The Undertaker are absolute legends in wrestling first ballot Hall of Famers. They didn't cross paths that often, but when they did, they gave us something special. And this was another match that I thought was really fantastic. I love these two working with each other. Definitely, again, another one of those, I guess you would say, hidden gem type matches another one that not a lot of people talk about but i absolutely loved it now before i get into my number one if you think i put a match too high put a match too low left a match off altogether let me know what you think down here in the comments while you're there smash that like button share the video subscribe if you haven't finally our number one non-rumble royal rumble match from the Royal Rumble 2000, our second time that show's made an appearance here, Triple H vs. Cactus Jack in the Street Fight. The matches that Triple H and Cactus Jack had, Mick Foley had, in the early 2000s, and even all the way back to 97, these two had such a great rivalry and put together some of the great matches of that century, of that generation. Cactus Jack was able to pull something out of Triple H that no one else had at that time. They made He, he made Triple H look more violent look more dangerous, look more ruthless than anyone could. And a lot of it had to do with how much the crowd loved Cactus Jack, loves Mick Foley, and how far he was willing to take to make a guy like Triple H, who at that time was still on his ascension to being one of the top stars in the wrestling business. He hadn't quite made it to the very top just yet. We would see him over the next decade dominate the top of the card, some say fairly, some say unfairly. I personally think he definitely deserved it. He was one of the most entertaining guys in that in that era, and I think he was definitely the top wrestler of that era, in my opinion. This match was brutal, it was violent, it was Mick Foley and Triple H at their absolute best trying to murder each other basically on live television. Fantastic match, I rather enjoyed it. Much like I said with a lot of these other matches, definitely go check it out if you haven't. I recommend that whole 2000 Royal Rumble. I thought it was a very good Royal Rumble overall. As you can see, two of the matches made this list. And with all that being said, that's my opinion of the top 10 non-Rumble Royal Rumble matches. My name is George Coles, and this has been another Heel Heat Top 10.